Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike ID Mercurial Veloce 2. Now, as you can see, it does come in your standard Nike ID black and white box. This box in particular is shockingly small. I'm not sure if you guys can tell on video, uh, but for whatever reason, it's just a really small box for a pair of shoes that are size 9 US. Inside the box, just like a standard pair of Veloces, again, all you get are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. So let me get these out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at my Nike ID Mercurials. Now, as you guys can see, this is what they look like. For those that are unfamiliar with Nike ID, it's a service on offer from Nike, obviously, that allows you to create a custom colorway on any given pair of shoes within the service. Now, uh, like any customization service, it does come at a premium cost. Normally, a pair of Veloce 2s in a general release standard colorway would run you about $130 at retail, whereas for a Nike ID variation, it's going to run you about $170. So it's a $40 premium to get a custom colorway, which isn't too unreasonable if you ask me. Um, again, you don't have to use Nike ID, but if you want the option to have a custom color with a fair amount of options on this particular shoe, I will give it that. An extra $40, like I said, isn't unreasonable. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, check out the Buy It Now links on the review page of my website, which you can find linked down below in the description of this video. Now, like any customization service, it does take some time from when you place your order for your shoes to arrive. Now the arrival times or estimated arrival times will vary depending on which shoe you're ordering. With the Veloce 2 at this point in time, it does say from when you place your order, it's estimated that it'll take about 30 days or four weeks for your shoes to arrive. Now when I placed my order, they came in two and a half weeks from that day. So I was very, very impressed. They came very quickly. And this time around with Nike ID, I have no complaints whatsoever, which is generally the case. Of course, if you order a pair, there's no guarantee that your shoes will come in two and a half weeks like mine did. Again, they give an estimation of 30 days or four weeks. Um, so they will kind of almost guarantee that the shoes will arrive within that particular time period. But like I said, this time around, I guess I might've got lucky or something like that. Maybe the shoes just weren't in demand that week. I was the only one that ordered a pair uh, but they arrived in two and a half weeks which i was very happy with and like i said no complaints whatsoever as far as the transaction process is concerned so in today's video we're going to go over all of the aspects as far as the new custom colorway is concerned the quality of the shoe in comparison to a general release version of the veloce 2 and of course how these things fit and feel on feet so with that being said let's get right into the video to start things off, let's talk about the colorway. Now normally whenever I order a Nike ID shoe or any kind of custom shoe for that matter, I tend to ask for your input because I'm generally uh, hesitant to pick a design. I can't make up my mind. So when I ask you guys for help, it helps me to make up my mind a little bit better. But with this shoe, this is essentially the design that I wanted to do on the Nike ID Superfly 4 that I made, but for whatever reason, on Nike ID for the Superfly 4, you can't pick a white base, therefore you can't get the white base with the Safari print, which is really, really what I wanted. When I saw this was available on the Veloce 2, I ordered a pair immediately, which is like I said, why I didn't ask for your input. Now this particular colorway, some of you guys may recognize it, you may already know what I'm about to say as far as what inspired this shoe. This colorway is inspired by the first CR7 signature colorway, which was featured on the Superfly 2 and the Mercurial Vapor 6, which were the inline models at that time, the models to have, if you will. I'll flash an image on screen exactly of the colorway and shoe that I'm talking about for those that are unfamiliar. So as you guys can see, this shoe is definitely reminiscent, obviously not identical, but reminiscent as far as the colorway is concerned. It features a white base with the Safari print on top, now within Nike ID, there is a good amount of colors to choose from, actually more than what you're gonna find with the Superfly 4. And for those that will ask the question, how come you can't Nike ID a Vapor 10? I don't really know. There's no answer to that question. You kind of have to have to ask Nike. For whatever reason, they just tend to skip certain models. You could never Nike ID a T90 Laser 4, but you could do the Strike model. Um, you could never Nike ID um, a Nike Tempo Legend 5, but you can Nike ID the Legacy model. Just for whatever reason, at certain times they skip a tie-end model. Again, no real reasoning there, it's just what they do. Uh, let, it's Nike, let them do what they want. So, white base, safari print upper, the tongue you can choose to go with tonal, or at least, that's, at least that's what they call it, where essentially that means that the tongue is the same color as the rest of the shoe. I wish it would have featured safari print, but you don't really have that option. Or you can go with a chrome tongue, which 
Uh, kind of looking back, that probably would have looked pretty cool, but I was again, kind of going for a tribute color here, so I wanted to keep it fairly simple. The laces, of course, I chose white. The uh, original ones would have had safari print laces, which were very, very cool. I think people were selling those things on eBay, just the laces for like 50 to $75 from what I remember. Um, you can't really get those anywhere now though. Uh, but white laces, again, just to go with the rest of the white upper, I thought that looked pretty good. The Nike swoosh, the main Nike swoosh here on the front, it normally was orange. Um, and the orange that I did use here is what they call safety orange. But because you have to put an outline, I didn't want to make it all solid. Because if you did a solid orange swoosh with the solid orange outline, I just thought it looked a little bit goofy. So to give it a bit of a twist and what I thought looked really good was to do a solid white Nike swoosh without that pattern on the inside and then to do an orange outline. And when you do the orange outline, it changes the Nike swoosh on the tongue orange as well as uh, the mercurial branding on the back orange, which I thought looked really good against that safari print background. And then of course, the Nike swoosh on the medial side of the shoe matches what you're going to find on the lateral side. As far as the sole plate goes, you do have the option to choose between black or white. I thought white looks pretty cool just to, because you never really see it. We haven't seen a, a white sole plate um, on the Veloce 2 or the Vapor 10 for that matter. So uh, that's why I went with it. You can see it's a white plate with kind of translucent uh, stud plate over top. It's kind of got a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it which uh, I guess that's just how it is. But overall, I just think it looks really, really good. And then as far as customization is concerned, I really just wanted to put CR7 and maybe the, uh, uh, the Portugal flag or something like that. But within Nike ID, there's actually restrictions. And I didn't know about this until I was trying to put in CR7, but you, they won't actually let you put CR7 on a pair of shoes, which I thought was kind of interesting. I know you couldn't put like any kind of swear words or anything that can be considered derogatory on the shoe. Um, but for whatever reason, you can't put CR7, which I somewhat understand why, but at the same time, why does Nike care if I put CR7 on my shoes on Nike ID? It just seemed a little bit strange to me. So for that reason, I ended up putting SR4U in that same safety orange color, as you can see. I went with a Nike swoosh instead of a Portuguese flag, just because I thought that would be a little bit weird, considering I couldn't put CR7. And then I put a seven as the tribute to Ronaldo, obviously. So it says SR4U Nike swoosh seven. So that is kind of the complete story behind this particular colorway and why I made the choices within this colorway. I think it looks pretty good. Leave your opinions on it down below in the comment section. But overall, the finish is clean. There's really no imperfections that I can see so far. Um, or have really spotted it all and I've looked at the shoe pretty closely and overall it just seems like a standard pair of Veloce 2s in a custom might I add very good looking colorway um, so uh, really happy with how they turned out and uh, I just wish you had these options on the Superfly 4 because I thought that would have been really really cool but nonetheless leave your opinions down below in the comments that I do a good job with this colorway or could you have done better or would you have done something differently uh, so that's pretty much it as far as the colorway goes and next we'll move on to the tech specs and of course the actual construction of the shoe itself. As far as performance is concerned, if you want as many details as possible, be sure to check out the full written review on my website, which you can find linked down below in the description. But for the sake of the video, we'll go over all of the tech specs and of course, compare it to a standard pair of Alache 2s in terms of quality and the materials used. So right off the bat, I'm gonna say, these are the same as a standard pair of Alache 2s. There's really no difference here whatsoever. The upper is a one-piece Tasian synthetic material. And what's great about the Veloce 2 is it retains pretty much all of the top end elements that you would find from the Vapor 10 at this point in time. The only two pieces of tech, if you want to call it that, that you're missing out on is the actual one-piece tongueless design, as well as ACC all conditions control, which are two features that arguably aren't necessarily needed to have a top end performer. So this essentially is an alternate, more traditional variation in comparison to the Vapor 10 of a very, very good shoe. So you have your Tatian Synthetic Upper. It's very thin, it's soft and flexible. It's the nicest variation of Tatian Synthetic Nike has ever used on a pair of Mercurials period. Um, it's got the internal support cage, so it's very well supported given that it's still very soft and flexible. It has a nice responsive feel like you would expect from a pair of Mercurials, and it has that very slight texturing on the outside. 
kind of difficult to see because of the Safari print here and it's a white base upper as well. But that same texturing that you would find on a Vapor 10 or a Vuache 2 is still featured on the Nike ID version as well. So please keep that in mind. Laces run right down the middle as Mercurials normally do. The low cut in the heel, the internal plastic heel counter, the heel liner is a smooth synthetic leather material with a decent amount of padding. The insole is fully removable. It features perforations throughout your Nike ID branding right there mesh liner on top and it's made from a single layer of foam as you guys can see nothing too fancy but enough to get the job done and provide some pretty decent step in comfort and then moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern the sole plate is made from a very thin compressed nylon material um, which is very very flexible uh, surprisingly flexible much more so than what you're going to find from the glass nylon sole plate on the Hypervenom Phantom, despite it looking very, very similar. So it has a nice responsive feel, but at the same time, they're very comfortable and natural feeling while you're running. And then of course you get the new Mercurial stud pattern, which like Mercurial stud patterns normally are, is very aggressive when it comes to making quick lateral cuts and accelerating in general. So if you've worn Mercurials in the past, you're really gonna like the stud pattern. It's a great performer overall for firm natural grass plane surfaces. And if you are going the Nike ID route, you do have the option to go with AG as well as soft grass pro variations if you so choose i know soft ground pro for sure not sure about ag i'm just kind of guessing at this point but nonetheless you do have other stud pattern variations other than firm ground uh, if you are planning on buying the Veloce 2, just the point I wanted to throw out there. So that's pretty much it as far as tech specs are concerned. It's a great performer overall. And if you don't necessarily have the budget for the Vapor 10, or you're just not a fan of the one piece design on the upper of the Vapor 10, the Veloce 2 is an extremely viable option. Plus you save yourself a little bit of extra money. In terms of weight, the Veloce 2 is every bit as light as the Vapor 10, which is kind of to be expected because it is such a similar shoe at the end of the day. So I'm going to weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size 9 US. I'm going to throw it on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 6.6 .6 ounces. So they are very, very light, both in hand as well as on feet. Not to mention that they have a very tight, seamless fit. It's a thin upper, but at the same time, it's very well supported. So when you pull the laces tight, it locks your foot in place and it just has a nice responsive feel overall in combination, especially with that mercurial stud pattern. So they're pretty much weightless. You forget that you're wearing shoes at all. It provides that barefoot sensation. And as far as ultra lightweight shoes go, you can't ask for much more, especially in this price range. All right, here's a look at the Nike ID Mercurial Veloce 2s on feet, and they pretty much feel just like a standard pair of Veloce 2s would, which is very, very good. They feel every bit as good as pretty much any other top-end Mercurial model that I've ever worn, current or past. And again, considering the price, maybe not so much for the Nike ID model, but for the standard colorway releases, you really can't go wrong here. It's one of the best bang for your buck. Uh, shoes out there right now, especially if you're looking for something that is lightweight and can provide a premium barefoot feel. The Dejan Synthetic Upper is thin, soft, and extremely flexible, very comfortable from right out of the box with minimal break-in time required. And as far as the fit is concerned, it has that nice, tight, no extra space on the inside of the shoe feel, which is what you would expect from a pair of high-end Mercurials, but you're getting it in the form of what is being labeled as a takedown model, but certainly doesn't feel like a takedown model. One thing that I did want to mention is that within Nike ID, when you pick your size, you also have the option to pick your width with the Veloce 2. You can go with the regular, which is what I went for, or wide. So if you have really wide feet and you're absolutely dying to have a pair of these shoes, you could go the Nike ID route and get that wide fit. Not sure how much wider it actually is, but like I said, it is an option out there if you are at all curious or interested in this shoe, but they don't necessarily fit your feet properly in this general release colorways. Um, so it's probably not the best uh, shoe for wider feet in the regular width variation, or at least the variation that's available to the public, which is exactly what you're gonna find with regular width. Um, so again, if you have wide feet, probably best to stay away or go with Nike ID and pick the wide fit version. As far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here and the fit and length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, they run true to size just like the, pair, the standard Veloce 2 colorways and I would recommend ordering true to size for the best possible fit. 
All right, guys, this is it for my review of the Nike ID version of the Mercurio Veloce 2. The shoes arrived in an extremely timely manner. They arrived in one piece and the quality is absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with how my colorway turned out. I think it looks pretty accurate just based on what I saw in the customizer. And I really have no complaints whatsoever. The Veloce 2 is a great performer overall. And honestly, if you can justify the extra $40 for a custom Nike ID colorway, I can highly recommend the service. Um, it's pretty quick. Um, the final product is great. They give you a good amount of customization options with this particular model. And like I said, I can highly recommend the service. Whereas if you can't justify the extra $40 and you're happy with the general release colorway, the Veloce 2 is still a great shoe. And one that, like I said, I strongly, strongly recommend for anybody on a budget or somebody who's even looking at the Vapor 10, but doesn't necessarily like the one piece upper design. This is a more traditional variation of a mercurial vapor. So that's pretty much it guys. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave those down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. And also if you have any video ideas slash suggestions, be sure to leave those down below as well. Always open to hear what you guys wanna see as far as content is concerned. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. That would be greatly appreciated. If you guys wanna see the detailed images of my pair right here, um, check out the review page on my website. That is linked down below in the description. On that same review pages, you also find the detailed full written review along with buy it now links for a pair of Nike ID Veloce 2s if you're interested in a pair. Other than that though guys, subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.